Hello to all subscribers. In this issue, you are waiting for a story about an unusual creature that began its existence after all the dinosaurs became extinct. This creature is a terrible bird, officially called Fororacos. Fororacos reached a height of up to 3 meters, weight ranged from 150 to 300 kilograms. They had very long legs, almost 2 meters long. With such paws they could develop great speed, according to the most conservative estimates, up to 45 kilometers per hour. And it was difficult for animals to escape from such a fast-footed predator. But still, what made the terrible bird truly terrifying? First, it walked on two legs and was very huge among many animals, occupying the top of the food chain for many millions of years. Secondly, she had a very powerful weapon. It was a huge sharp beak. She was much taller than a human, and if you stand next to her skeleton, it looks impressive. How long has this bird species existed? 58 million years. Human civilization can only envy the evolution of Fororax. And this, by the way, is the only period in the history of the planet, when the main predator on Earth was not a dinosaur or an animal, but a real future bird. Why did this bird exist for so many years and then suddenly disappear? After all, it had virtually no enemies and no problems with food. That's what we're going to find out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, leave comments and put a thumbs up. Hit the bell not to miss new interesting releases from our channel. We continue. Scientists have found out that the terrible bird, aka Fororacos, was a relative of Tyrannosaurus. Therefore this wingless monster absorbed all the most terrible qualities of the ruthless ancestor. What were the similarities between the T-Rex and Fororacos? Both had powerful hind legs, sharp claws, on the small front ones and a large, huge head, with which the bird simply beat its prey to death. All the actions of Fororacos were very similar to those of Tyrannosaurus. With just one monstrous blow of its beak, the bird could knock down even such an animal as a primitive horse. Why another king of the animal kingdom went extinct. About five million years ago, the Earth began to undergo climatic changes again. Volcanoes played a major role in this. One by one, large-scale eruptions occurred, and the Earth was once again engulfed in fiery lava. Places where the ocean had raged became islands, and some of them became crossings from one continent to another. For example, the Isthmus of Panama between South and North America came into existence, along which the very migration of the dreaded birds took place over several millennia. As a result, both Americas became dominated by Fororacos, and North America was literally overflowing with potential prey, and the terrible birds were at ease. Their populations flourished, but in North America, the terrible birds faced several problems at once. Two kinds of predators that did not want to share territories and hunting grounds with anyone. These are ancient wolves and saber-toothed tigers. There was a struggle for survival between these species, and only one species would survive in this difficult struggle. You and I know who won. It was the wolves. But why wolves? Let's find out. The terrible bird of prey was not afraid of battles, and was often the first to attack predators who did not want to share territory with it, and its secret weapon was a sharp blow with its beak, which exceeded the power of the eagle's blow, but not so strong as to knock down a very large animal. Most likely the bird of prey had sufficient intelligence, because it could make precise blows to the vulnerable places of the victim, the back of the head or temples. The beak would damage the brain and cause the victim to die instantly, if they had. To fight a large prey comparable in size to their own, the Fororacos used the strategy of a series of blows, two steps back, like a boxer in the ring. The fact that we show on the screen how a bird knocks down an animal with a blow is only a theory of scientists. But, as we know, that theory can later turn out to be a reliable fact. In addition to actively hunting, Fororacos could be a scavenger, driving other animals away from the carrion with its imposing beak. Numerous studies every year make this predator not so impressive and invincible. Fororacos hunted alone, and it was mostly males, as the task of females was to carry the eggs and raise the offspring, all as in domestic birds. Birds of prey also lacked the gregarious instincts of tyrannosaurs and other similar giant carnivores. It was this lifestyle that may have caused the extinction of these monsters. Another theory for the extinction of the bird of prey, which is close to the concrete facts. It is the pattern of incubation of offspring. 
For Arakos incubated their eggs on bare ground without any protection in the form of shrubs, thickets, burrows, or tall trees. The unborn offspring were in constant need of protection, and their parents were often unable to keep them safe because for the most part, both were on the hunt. A nest located on the ground and left unattended was like a signal to predators such as wolves and saber-toothed lions. Wolves, being social animals, were able to protect their offspring perfectly well, which is not the case with Fororacos. Wolves lived and hunted in packs. The leaders of any pack could communicate with each other by howling, growling, and various body actions. This happened stealthily but effectively. Signaling in total darkness and at a distance of several kilometers was very effective. Terrible birds could not do such a thing. Wolves did not fear the Fororacos when they were hungry. For one thing, they realized that an attack by an entire pack, even on an animal as e, huge as the Fororacos, could mean victory over the enemy, even at the cost of killing a few of their comrades. But the victory of a wolf pack over a lone bird of prey was mostly predictable. The conclusion of this whole story is one. Lone predators could not compete with social groups of carnivores. Gradually but inevitably, such animals died out. Whole species died out, defeated by powerful social strata of animals. I would like to ask the question, which of them was stronger? Wolves, saber-toothed lions, or birds of prey? It is possible that wolves both in that distant time and in our modern life were more adapted to survival and easily adapted both climatically and socially, so we can see them nowadays, live near them and observe them, their habits, study their habits and way of life. Of course, if the dreaded bird had not gone extinct and lived in our time, we would have learned even more about the interesting evolution of fororacosis. Scientists have suggested that birds of prey, due to climate change and unequal competition with other predators, may have evolved into smaller individuals, down to the size of a chicken. But such a theory suggests that these small individuals could not have survived for long surrounded by large predators and we thank everyone who has watched this episode to the end. Subscribe, put your finger up, and leave comments on the topic of the prehistoric world of our Earth. And of course, do not forget to click on the bell to be the first to see or not to miss new and interesting releases from the channel.